Welcome to the Wager Talk podcast for the week ending February 18th. Tonight, we have a big show. We've got William Bernanke from CG Analytics. He's going to join us, going to talk about the new football league. Exciting stuff there last week with the start of that. Curious to see where the money went and how the action was. We've got another edition of Handicapper's Corner. Ralph and Michaels is in studio along with Dave Koken. We're going to break down the big college basketball games for the weekend. It's the NBA All-Star break this week, so no NBA games to preview. And, of course, at the end of the show, it is best bet time. Mark Seidel is behind the controls. I'm your host, Marco D'Angelo. So let's get this party started and let's welcome in tonight's first guest, William Bernanke. He is the manager at CG Analytics. You can follow William on Twitter at the Moneyline Guy. And Will, thanks for joining the show again this week. First week after the Super Bowl, uh, you know, things slow down, you know, that little bit of quiet time. From now till March Madness, but we had something different this year. We got uh, a new football league that started last weekend, and you know, for me, I'm going to be full disclosure. I watched a grand total. You could have put up the over under. Do you remember what the over under was for rushing yards in the Super Bowl for Tom Brady? Mm. Well, I think it was like one and a half yards. You could put that half a yard. Yeah, you could put that up for me for minutes watched of this football league. And crush the under, because <laughs> I didn't see a single play. Uh, I would say uh, you, the the club you're you're in right now is is probably ninety percent of the people have joined that. There's uh, very few people I've spoken to watched any anything more than a about a series of these games, and it was similar to like what the XFL uh, that type of experience where maybe people watched a quarter and said this is you know this is uh, not really good. I'm not watching this. The quality of play here is no better than. FCS middle mid level FCS football. Not to insult the guys out there that are playing, but it, it was pretty bad. And the, and the handle reflected that, uh, even though there was a lot of hype around it, and which it caught me off guard. The, I'll be honest, I didn't know much about this league. I didn't know if it if it was being nationally televised. I just assumed it was going to be treated like a minor league baseball game. So that being said, the biggest handle we had. The Orlando Atlanta game did the highest handle, and I want to put this in perspective as it was equivalent to an added game in college basketball. So, like a Maris Siena game on a Sunday, that's the type of handle we saw in that particular game. And the other games had very little handle. We're talking maybe high, uh, I'm sorry, low four figures, high three figure handle, with, you know, a couple hundred bucks. So, that's even less than those added games. And for those that, that don't know, that game was nationally televised on CBS, not CBS Sports Network, the actual CBS. So, yep. I mean, it had a following. I, 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 to be honest with you, there's a handful of people I talked that didn't even know the league was starting. So some of it may have just been they were completely caught off guard. That's what it was, off guard and not knowing some of these, uh, some of the quarterbacks. I mean, Hackenberg, we know, we know him. He wasn't in the game, but <laughs> we know him for other reasons. We know uh, to bet against him, and there was another situation to bet against him this past week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, and, and as far as, you know, uh, how we did on these games, uh, we lost a few bucks, of course, with all the favorites and the home teams covering, and uh, so these games, uh, three to four games going under. Uh, but again, the handle wasn't where we, we'd like it to be, uh, and I think maybe week two, three, the handle will be a little bit, it'll pick up a little bit because people are more familiar with what these teams are, and and uh, maybe have a better read on this. If someone's going to follow this, they might have some kind of edge in that regard. We've seen those big line moves too. Well, would you say that uh, the action that you did take was it more of over-the-counter recreational players, or guys that you would consider sharp? I think it was a mix of both here. You know, I, I, Sharps, uh, I spoke to a few of them, and, and they weren't interested uh, at all in this because of the low limits. But a, a couple did say that uh, uh, if they were going to hit something, maybe some of the totals. You know, I don't know if they did, but that would be the only thing they'd be interested in. I'm assuming they did with these big line moves um, that we've had. You know, the totals especially. They moved. To, I saw one that moved like 10 points in one of the games there. So that we've got a mix. You know, when you're making the, the numbers for this new league and not knowing what's going on, and you know, do you just put do you you look where other where other sports book are, put your number close to there, and just let your money dictate it, or is there work put into who the rosters are and trying to make adjustments from other sports books? Well, a little bit of both there. 
I mean, you saw with these big line moves in the first week that it's been tough to price these games no matter what you do. And uh, after, I think, a couple weeks, you know, two, three, probably three weeks, we'll have a better read on, on uh, you know, the rosters and, and what the, you know, the pace of play with these teams, what type of offense they're going to run. Uh, and, we'll, and again, letting the market kind of correct itself is always an option, but we try to avoid that at all costs. That, but that's always, you know, the last resort. Let the market correct itself. Someone who bets it maybe a bigger bet uh, would be helping us correct it. You know, they're knowing maybe more than we do. You know, um, you know, uh, Mark Lawrence is a friend of mine, and he and I, you know, both looked and you know would love to put information out this. But it is amazing there are no box scores for these games. That makes it tough for gamblers, let alone you guys making the number. You could find some, you could find some box scores where there's player stats, but nowhere can you find the total yards and penalties and time of possession. So. You know, to me, the league's doing itself a disservice. It's trying to get people interested. And, you know, we know that if they have gamblers, it's going to become more interesting to more people. So, to me, the lack of information out there is just mind-boggling. But that's got to make it as difficult or even more difficult for you. Yeah, it's incredible. It's, it's funny. I was trying to check one of the scores just out of curiosity. I was running some errands and had some time to kill. Wanted to see the score. I couldn't find a site besides their own site, AAF, I believe it was, that had the score, and it wasn't really well done. Like the site was freezing. It was just very amateur type of site. You probably you might have seen it. And uh, box scores were uh, nowhere. Now I know uh, someone told me a site called ChatSports.com would have the the box scores on it. So at least we have that. Now to look at uh, again I haven't checked it so it could be, it could be a site that's down for all I know but chatsports.com uh, I'm doing free advertising then of course uh, they have box scores where you know this is ridiculous that you can't have uh, this should be on ESPN it should be on all the major sites if this if they're going to be big where they're going to be on CBS and, and be on big networks how could you not have access to scores and box scores at, at, at your leisure Will, moving to another big event, um, the Daytona 500. Now, NASCAR, uh, that's a, you know, isolated market as far as, you know, betters go. It's not, uh, you know, a big one. But when you get an event like this, I have to say it's kind of like the Kentucky Derby. You know, people will bet the Kentucky Derby that don't bet horses all year. But that one Saturday, that first Saturday of May, they want to be a part of the party, the event. You know, everybody's, you know, watching it. Is Do you see that same effect with the Daytona 500? Right now the handle's been pretty, you know, it's been okay in the, in the 500. I thought it would be higher when I took a look at it today. Uh, and certainly not at the level of the Kentucky Derby would be this far out of each event. So it wasn't on par with that in, in that regard. But that could be just, you know, the, the, the type of betters we have as opposed to maybe another book has a different type of better. That, that's also uh, a factor I thought of. Are there any big bets on that race? or, or And do you have anyone that you consider sharp when it comes to, to NASCAR racing? Yeah, we have a couple of betters we consider respected betters when it comes to racing. Uh, but there hasn't been any really big bets, just a couple of low three-figure bets on a few, not long shots, but mid-range shots. Uh, but, yeah, nothing significant. You know, I have one more, but, you know, Marco has one more question for you. But, you know, I have one. The NBA All-Star Game we know is a game that, you know, people have some interest in. But I know the three-point shot has gotten more interest of late does that does the three point contest is it starting to approach what you get for the handle for the game itself? Not quite the same because of when it is. I think if it was on the day of the game, it would be even better. Of course, they'll never do that. But it's tucked in there on it's on Saturday night, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Um, and still have a lot of great college basketball that night. You have still have hockey going on. So there's other sports that would take away from that handle. So it's it's not even it doesn't approach the uh, the game itself. Will, pitchers and catchers have reported uh, spring training's underway and uh, baseball's just around the corner. Uh, do you guys have the uh, baseball futures out? Yeah, we, we just have the uh, – actually, we have the home run the, who, to win the home run title and also uh, futures you know, to win the National League, American League, and to win the World Series. But we don't have win totals out yet. We're still waiting on – <laughs> the 80 or 90 or so free agents that can impact those. So it would be foolish to put it out now without any knowing where some of these names go that could influence uh, uh, win totals by, you know, upwards of at least a few games. Yeah, but, with, a, with a guy like Harper or Manny Machado, those are yeah. obviously the two big names out there yet. Um, 
how much would you put for a player like that that wherever they land, you know, how many wins do you think they are worth? Well, I actually think that would it, it slightly depend on the ballpark they play in. Uh, like Bryce Harper's, we actually have him uh, – you know, in the home run thing right now, and we've had taken some bets on him. Now it's, I guess, maybe these people figure, the oh, he, if he plays in this park, it's good value. If he doesn't, then it's maybe what it should be. But I would personally would want to wait until I know where he's playing before I'd bet him to win the home run title. But as far as the win totals go, I think it has to, a lot to do with you know where they end up landing. You know, if Harper, let's say, goes to San Francisco, not a greatest hitters park. Uh, so, and, and that division has some also lousy hitters parks. You know, the Dodgers and the uh, uh, Padres. You know, being graveyards basically. So that might not affect it as much if, if he went to per se. Uh, let's say, um, I don't know what the other teams even discuss now. The Cardinals, Cubs, Nationals. You know, back there, better hitters parks. He might have more impact with his bat, uh, and that might entail give an extra win or two. Uh, for the wind toll. Machado, the same thing. If he goes to the Yankees, I would certainly think it'd help there. Good hitter's park, especially if he's going to right field, where uh, if he goes uh, to uh, the White Sox, you know, I, I find it hard to believe he's going to affect them at all. Uh, wind toll, because their pitching is so bad, it won't matter as much. Uh, and then if he goes to San Diego, same thing. Now, if they both went to San Diego, now we have a different story. That we'd have to do some thinking, a good hour or so of uh, really deciding what we, what we would do. Crazy stuff, and I'm surprised that we're already here in uh, spring training and these guys have not been signed. Uh, Going to be interesting to follow that and see where they land. Hey, Will, good stuff as always. We appreciate you taking the time to stop by and uh, share the information behind the counter. Curious to see uh, when we talk to you next week if uh, the action went up or not after week one and uh, of the uh, American Football Alliance and see if it gains a momentum. Uh, that'll be uh, – and what, what are you going to put the over-under on me watching this week? I'm going to say – I'm going to say uh, a minute, 30 seconds. Okay. One minute, 30 seconds of game time, not commercials, not, you know, game, actual game time. So the clock starts at 15, 13, 30. All right. We'll see what happens with that one. I'll report back to you next week, buddy. Sounds hey. good. I look forward to it. All right. Have a good one. All you right. Too. All right, guys, we're going to step out for a quick break. When we come back, Ralph and I are going to head into the handicapper's corner, and we're going to take a look at – the earners and the burners this year so far in college basketball. That's up next on the Wager Talk podcast. It's Manic Monday, and that means every pick at wagertalk.com is just $9. Get a play in any sport valued at up to $30 for just $9 each and every Monday at wagertalk.com. Welcome back to Handicapper's Corner. Ralph and I are going to break down uh, some stats that Ralph has looked up. I also got some money earners and burners to talk about in college basketball. Last week, we broke down the uh, NBA, who is making the money and who is very unfortunate setting it on fire. College basketball, we're going to start with, I'm going to tell you who the number one team is, but I'm going to exclude the smaller conferences that people can't get money down on, or if they can, it's limited. But, but I'll tell you what, let's just say something to our listeners. If you have an out for those conferences, you know, we're going to talk about the wager talk guide, the college mm-hmm. basketball guide that I update every Monday for free. You have the same information on the whack and the SWAC and, and the MEAC, where if you could play enough money, Take a look at those teams. Take take a look at those teams that are plus points per game, plus rebound per game, and have great ATS numbers. Those are all on the bottom. Again, if it's worth the time to put it in because you have an out, take advantage. And just because other people aren't doing it, don't do it. Yeah, and the number one team is Sam Houston State. If you bet them every game this season, you would be plus $100 per game. You would be up $1,360, Ralph. They are 18 and 4 against the spread. Our number two team is Ole Miss. Uh, Mississippi uh, been a good money earner this year. You'd be up $1,140. Go to the Missouri Valley. How about Drake? Uh, I break for Drake. They have brought you. Uh, $1,140 also. Let me just jump in on Drake. Drake, a team, you know, the Missouri Valley, you know, has been dominated for so long. You know, it was Northern Iowa, and now you have the Loyolas. 
Drake is a team that I give all the credit. They're now 19-7 and seven straight up. They are one of my surprise teams. They lost a multi-year starting point guard, uh, Nick, Nick uh, Norton, 12 games in. I faded him for a few games, and it cost me. What uh, uh, what Darian DeVries has done as the head coach there, he, he deserves a ton of credit. So sometimes injuries are teams you play against, but – don't keep playing against them because there are teams like Drake that rebound, turn it around, and just keep producing. Yeah, and apparently, you know, and also because of the injury, Vegas and the public overreacts, and you're getting value with that team. Yeah. And uh, they that value has resulted in an 18-6 and six point spread record. Here's one for you. How about Hofstra? Hofstra, the number four money earner. They are another one uh, at 18-6 and six plus $1,140. And to round out our top five, Virginia. Virginia, and in, this says something about Virginia, uh, and Ralph, and you know that's my team. I like Virginia, uh, even though they lost to Duke. This is a team that, because of last year, a lot of people had that bad taste in their mouth losing in that first round. They've been a public team all year, and yet they're still able to – exceed the number they're beating the number being a public team that says a lot they've been in the top five all year long this is a team that uh, i think is going to go deep you know a couple more teams just they're they're not on the top five but they've been money makers you know michigan state and the zags are two more teams that we talk to yeah. bookmakers that keep getting crushed because of those teams you know uh jumping back one minute to uh hofstra you know hofstra is a team that is 21 and 4 they will be a tournament team. They probably have the best shooter in all of college basketball, Justin Wright Foreman. I think he's leading the NCAA in scoring. He is a blast to watch. So, you know, there are good teams for good reasons, and, and he's one of those teams that they have a superstar. I, I think he probably has NBA potential, but um, when you get those NBA potential guys, you know, sort of like Curry when he was at Davidson was the same situation, yeah. that he was that good of a player compared to everyone else where he can will them to win games and cover games. All right. Well, when you have one end of the spectrum, there's got to be a swing to the other way, and there's got to be some guys that are just setting money on fire. And the leader of the pack right now is Ryder. And this is a team, Ralph, they're 12 and 13 straight up, okay? So they're a 500 ball club. But, man, they are nowhere near a 500 ball club uh, on the point spread. You would have lost $1,490 if you bet Ryder $100 every game this season, sitting at 6 and 19 against the spread. And, you know... uh... I, you know, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't see the list. But Ryder's a team that has multiple winning years, twenty-two and ten last year. So when you have those teams that you know they they went to the NIT, they lost to Oregon in the first round. But this year you have a twenty-two win team, and now you have a team that's um, under five hundred, uh, and you have a team that won a lot of games early against bad teams. They had some injuries. They have now lost five straight games straight up as well. Here's one, and you know. Ralph, we all watch the betting board every day, and we watch and see where line moves go and, and different things. This team that's on the bottom of the pack, for whatever reason, multiple times I've seen them taking money. <laughs> okay? Somebody's betting them. They're and, the due system? Huh? They're due to well, cover? I, I, maybe. And I say, like, who's betting this team? But Marshall's a team that has gotten money several times. You know, especially you look at the bet percentages and they're showing, you know, the bet percentage on the other side and yet the lines drop in, you know, to Marshall and they go out and lose again. They're number two for the money burner. They are hundred and eighty dollars, a hundred dollars a game. Again, they're another t- team that was twenty five and eleven last year. They have the best player in all of West Virginia, better than any player on the Mountaineers and John mm-hmm. Elmore. And it's a team that I have a, a friend who lives there and used to go to Marshall. And he also off, off, all, often gives me <laughs> notes, excuse me, I can talk too, on West Virginia and Marshall. And this hasn't been a surprise to him. The team has just lost its continuity. Elmore is starting to not play the team concept, just trying to get his points and score. And uh, it's a team that, you know, right now, they have lost six of seven games straight up. So if you still see people betting on them, grab that value and don't be afraid to fade them. Yeah, and they're a team that's 500, or 13 and 12 straight up, but not at the windows. 
Now, here's one where they're just ugly on both ends of, the, of it, straight up and against the spread. Iona, 9-15 and 15 straight up, just 6-17-1 and one against the spread, and that has resulted in minus $1,270 uh, on the flat betting $100. Ugh. <laughs> I can tell you that up until last night, I am when it was one in twelve ATS on the road. Well, after I gave out Siena yesterday, minus two and a half at home against Iona. <laughs> Iona is now two and twelve ATS on the road, and they won that game outright. Uh, sorry to bring that one up, Ralph. Uh, you know, at least there was no three pointer at the buzzer involved or anything. In no, that no, game. they okay. they pulled away the last couple minutes. Okay, so. all right. How about uh, here's one of your MAC teams, another team that's 11 and 12, straight up, hovering around that 500 mark, but a dismal 5, 16, and 1 against the spread and checking in as the fourth worst team in the country, betting wise, Ohio U. Yeah, again, Ohio, just another team that y- you had. Uh, a little different than the other teams because they had a losing they had a losing season last year, and uh, but they had a decent amount of returning starters. But I I don't have the answer for Ohio. I've watched a few games. You know, it's not that they've had a lot of injuries. You know, they're a team that has uh, four of their guys have started twenty two or more of their twenty three games. The other guy started thirteen. All the guys that are supposed to be there be there. So. Uh, they're just not playing the same. So they're a team I don't have an answer for, but uh, they just continue to underachieve this year with who they have on the on the court. I'll be honest with you. You know, um, I'm having a good basketball season, incredible run right now. This is one conference that, to me, and I've, I've commented to our buddy, you know, uh, Brian Leonard, you know, he's Mr. Mac guy in football net. I said, I'm just staying away from the the MAC because when I look, you know, I handicap the games. I look at all of the games, and I look at these MAC games. And even whenever I get a lean there, it's just uh, I can't make anything out of the entire conference. It just seems not to be any consistency uh, with the teams. In well, I can tell you, Western Michigan is bad. <laughs> okay, they you know just straight up they yeah. were one in ten. As as we're recording now, I had a play on Kent State. It was a weird 5 o'clock start time. Kent State's now up 20 with two and a half minutes to go, laying the four. So uh, Western Michigan has one good player, and they're a bad team. But, again, uh, it was a situation, though, just to go over a game and why. Kent State was off a loss. They're a 17-win team. You have a Western Michigan team that's a seven-win team that was off an upset win. You know, you talk about situations. That's one that just fits that mold, and it works out again. All right, let's round it out with the uh, fifth and final money burner. James Madison, uh, they're 10 and 15 straight up, 7 and 17 against the spread. That would have resulted in a loss of $1,170, betting them $100 a game. Yeah, they're a team that I think had one injury and just, uh, again, under uh, underachieving. Teams just sometimes, you know, have trouble. The, the pieces don't fit together, and they're just one of those teams that has been in that role. Yeah, uh, they didn't make the top five, but one team I'm going to uh, throw out there that was a little bit of a surprise this year, um, St. Joseph's. This is a team, you know, always, you know, good coach team and everything. Um, play those, you know, they get you in those 60 game, you know, the 60 point, you know, upper 50s, lower 60 type games. And, you know, the points are always a premium. But this team this year uh, just didn't get it done. They're only 8 and 16 Uh, against the spread this year. Uh, Hey, Marco, keep that St. Joe's thought in your head when we get the best bets later. All right. Okay, let's do that. Um, Good. uh, um, Write that down. Should I get in and get advanced line before we get to segment four? It's out already. Yeah, Yeah, okay. All right. We'll have to check that out. All right. Uh, That's going to wrap up my earners and burners for this week. Um, Ralph, you've got some angles for us. And uh, for those not familiar with our radio show, Ralph does the – Joe's Angle of the Day. We have a sponsor here in Vegas, uh, Joe's Seat Prime, Seafood and Crab. You can check them out in Las Vegas if you're here. Uh, but we do the Angle of the Day, and you produce those for the show every day. And we've had some just hellacious winning runs with those. And you've pulled some stats for us for some games this weekend. Share them with us. You know, Ryder, you talked about Ryder has lost nine straight against the spread and also on Friday Davidson 13 and 5 ATS at home. Well, let's see. 
you just mentioned the bad St. Joe's situation. I'm mentioning a good Davidson situation. Huh, uh, stay tuned to the best bets. <laughs> you know, a couple on Saturday, a couple over-unders. Florida is 1-13 over-under on the road, their last 14 games away from Gainesville. Duke, 4-17 and 17 over-under at home. You know, Duke is a poor shooting team. Yes, they made the run, and they get a lot of dunks, but when they're forced to slow down and shoot the ball, it, it goes under. Uh, St. Louis, 3-15 and 15 at home. They've had a couple games over. I believe that was 1-15. I think their last mm-hmm. two games have gone over. Uh, so pay attention when those trends change or a team tends to not play that intense defense. And James Madison, 15-5 and five over-under at home. Couple against the spread, <laughs> Pittsburgh, who I, is going in the right direction, hiring uh, yeah, Cable man. from North Carolina. But they're just they off- haven't done anything since the Florida State. They're win. offensively inept. They're playing good defense, but again, so they, they got all freshmen. They, that's, they, that's the problem. Yeah, and they're playing them, and he should. So next year is the year to keep an eye on. But they've failed to cover eight straight. Nebraska has failed to cover seven straight. I'll tell you what, Nebraska last year and the start of this year. I think it was twenty one and one ATS at home. Yeah, you and brought that had, up on one of our shows yeah. and actually and used them as the a streak. Yeah. That's when it stopped. They yeah. call it the Grim Reaper. I was the cooler. St. <laughs> Mary's nine and one ATS at home. Mm-hmm. Xavier one and seven ATS on the road. And now I want to point this out with uh with an extra note. Cal State Northridge, eleven one and one ATS their last thirteen games. Well, they were eleven zero oh, and one. And I actually went against Cal Northridge last night as one of my plays on UC Davis. So just because a team is on an 11-0 and ATS run doesn't mean you blindly bet them. I mean, I bet against a team that was on an 11-0 and ATS mm-hmm. run. UC Davis had been in a situation where they had played just played four straight road games, six of their eight conference games were on the road. They were finally back home playing good defense. So... While we give you these angles, and yes, they're they're fun to look at, it's not a reason to play a game. Perhaps it's a reason to look at a game and then continue the thought if there's other reasons to play the game. But don't blindly just play a team because of a good angle that we talked about. It's just got to be part of your entire handicapping repertoire. Great stuff as usual, Ralph. <laughs> uh, and you can check out Ralph's. Uh, daily uh, NBA stat sheet. Now, obviously, that'll be on hiatus till the All Star. Four best bets on the NBA stat sheet. I passed. Mm-hmm. We're recording this Thursday. There were only three games on Thursday, and nothing statistically, p- technically pulled out. So there was no best bet. But then the NBA stat sheet every Monday. Again, thirty-two conferences. You're getting the exact same college in- stat sheet. Excuse me, yeah, college. <laughs> it's posted every Monday. The stats are updated through Sunday, so you're getting a fresh sheet every Monday with every stat updated, every ATS number updated, and especially those conferences you don't pay attention to. When we get into the second round, or even those conferences that you do pay attention to, when you have a team that is statistically better than the team above it, and they're playing them, that's one of the most powerful handicapping situations there is playing a better team that's below the other team in the standing it works in the nfl it works in college football it works in college basketball so you know the standings are there the teams are ranked by standings you have point per game diff rebound per game diff turnover per game diff in conference and full season ats categories Overall, conference only, home and away, over-unders for all of those. My power ratings and ranks and strength of schedule as well. And, guys, it's all absolutely free at Wager Talk. We continue to lead the industry in free content that we provide. Um, most people would charge for that. In it, in You would pay a ton for that type of information. I can remember the old days, yeah. Ralph. We would just die for, you know, me and you've been doing this forever. I mean, we go back, uh, you know, uh, me to the eighties. Uh, you know, I started nineteen eighty. What what year did you start? You know, I uh, uh, I was eighty six, eighty five, eighty five, eighty six. I I was living in California, and mm. uh, you know, Brian Leonard got me into the industry mm. back then, and uh, so yeah, I, information. I mean, that's how you know I had worked for North Coast. Most of you know for you know probably fifteen or eighteen years, but you know. Back when when we had preseason and North Coast had those records and World Football League, all of those were stories that um, you found information. We had people faxing us newspapers daily. And one funny story, um, 
it was the World Football League, and the Birmingham Fire were a team, and and Columbus Glory was a team. But we couldn't find out how these teams were playing. The stories were so limited. So what I used to do is I became friends with the radio guy in, in, in Birmingham. So when the games were being played, I would call him, and he would put me on hold. <laughs> While I was on hold, I just listened to the game and marked out who was doing well and how many yards they got. So that's the extent we used to go to back then, Marco. But the information's out there. It's free. You know, add in puck time videos. That gives you great NHL yeah. stuff. Add in our weekly videos, all the daily content we have on all the write-ups and the free plays. And the one thing I'm going to mention that I still think people don't take advantage of, if you want to buy my plays or not, that's fine. But Marco and I both put a lot of work into our write-ups. You can go to our web pages the next day, look at the last 20 plays, click on those plays, and read the write-ups on why we like those games. It can teach you something moving forward on what we look at and how we handicap situations or technical spots that we look at. So, again, even if you're not buying the plays, go to the site, go to those handicappers, click on their page in those last 20 games, and again, it just become a sponge and continue to read those write-ups. Good stuff as always, Ralph. And we're going to take a break. When we come back, it is going to be college basketball previews up next here on the Wager Talk podcast. Every Tuesday, wagertalk.com offers a best bet selection from its hottest handicapper. It's a great way to introduce yourself to wagertalk.com with a big best bet winner for just $2 on $2 Tuesday. Welcome back to the Wager Talk podcast. It is weekend preview time, guys. No NBA this week. We've got college basketball center stage, but before we get to our previews, I want to tell you that tonight's segment is sponsored by uwager.eu. Get a 50% sign-up bonus using promo code WT50 when signing up. This offer is exclusive to Wager Talk listeners. Get 50% off on sign or excuse me, a 50% bonus at sign up. All right, guys, we're heading into college basketball for the weekend. Before we get to those big marquee matchups over the weekend, we got one Friday night. Might not be a marquee matchup, but these are two very good teams in a conference that doesn't get any notoriety. And this year, they shouldn't. There's only a couple teams in there. That's the MAC. But uh, we got a good one on Friday night Buffalo at Toledo. Uh, Dave, I'll start with you. Buffalo. Top 25 team. They've been hanging around there all year playing a Toledo team. Big revenge game for Toledo. Well, it is. And, you know, I think what we've seen a little bit from Buffalo as the season has worn on is maybe a little bit of boredom setting in in the Mid-American Conference. Um, You know, they, they, they pretty much punched their ticket to the NCAA tournament, barring a slew of bad losses in the MAC. And I, th- I think they've taken care of business well enough. They still need to win the, the league, but they're at the point now where unless they really screw up early in the MAC tournament, I think as long as they make it to the MAC finals, they would be in as an at-large. It's hard to imagine that Buffalo wouldn't make it. Their numbers are just too good. The problem is I don't know whether I feel safe backing them down the regular season home stretch because now they're in a situation here where, you know, this game probably means more to Toledo. Than it does to Buffalo. I suppose an argument can be made, well, Buffalo can't afford this loss. You know, they, they really don't want to start taking multiple losses in the conference because that they, then they could end up like San Francisco, which mm-hmm. is playing their way out of the NCAA tournament. But, I, you know, t- to me, I still think it's a little bigger game to Toledo. What that does basically is take me off the game because I don't want to play against Buffalo. When Buffalo is in the right mindset, they could beat anybody in the league by a lot, and they can do it in 20 minutes. That's the thing. I mean, So if you're looking at this game and you're considering Toledo, I would look at the first 20 minutes. I play first half, which to me is always a better bet with home dogs anyway. If you're going to get a good performance out of a home dog, it's more than likely going to be in the first 20 minutes. They're coming out fired up. The crowd's excited. And you might get that extra push against a team that, you know, could be a little bit flat. I think that would be what I would play here is Toledo first half. Ralph, you look at this one. You've got Buffalo. This is a team that loves to get up and down the floor. 
uh, 11th in the country in scoring, 84.7 points per game. And as I said, big revenge game for Toledo. And I kind of, you know, just swished that under the rug. 110 to 80 was the score. Uh, Buffalo put on uh, just a beatdown on Toledo earlier in the season. Does Toledo get the revenge here? Well, you know, reading the local papers like I do, especially the Toledo Blade, you know, Bowling Green a few games back when Buffalo lost on February the 1st, Bowling Green talked about how it was their best home crowd they had in over five years. They were sold out. The the fans were there. Toledo will be ready. But to me, I agree with Dave. I think that for the game, I cannot play against Buffalo. I mean, the line came two and a half. That's lower than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. I thought it was thinking four and a half range. So, to me, I if I had to pick anyone, I would pick Buffalo. And, yes, Toledo has revenge, but you're talking about an elite team. And, Dave, I think, to be honest with you, I think if they win out their conference that they don't even need to win a first round in the Might MAC. Might not need to. But, yeah, I mean, so that shows you the level they're at for a MAC to get a an automatic – to get a second team in if Buffalo doesn't win. But I think this is good. This team's good enough. They want to make a statement. They want to sweep the rest of their games. They want to, they want to win their conference tournament as well. So um, because the line opened two and a half, to me it would either be look at Buffalo. But I, I think Dave's advice is solid about it. if you want that home dog, play him early because Buffalo has just too much talent and too much depth to wear on. But uh, it would be Buffalo or pass for me for the game. All right, for me, I'm going to kind of go a different direction. Uh, we talked about that first game, 110 to 80, and I think we're going to get an inflated number. In, it's 156 and a half. Oh, it's it. out. Yep. It's out. Yep. Okay, that's cool. I, my notes here is if it comes 155 or higher, I'm going under. There so go. there, there we are. Uh, I think Toledo has to slow this game down to have a shot. I know Buffalo, they go one way. They go up and down the floor. But you look at this Toledo team, six of their last eight opponents, they've held the 39% or less shooting. And being a Friday night game, being a jacked-up crowd, small schedule on a Friday night, I'm going to go ahead and look to the under in this one with Toledo. I think that's the way uh, that my money's going to flow for this one. You know, in Buffalo's last game was at Akron, which has a very good defense and plays slow pace, but that was a 77 70 or 79, 70 games, so, so clearly under the numbers you're talking about. All right, guys, moving on to Saturday. We got some good ones, and, well, I guess uh, might as well start with the biggest game on the card yep. for Saturday. Uh, we said last week we had the game of the year with Duke and Virginia. Is this uh, game of the year part two with Tennessee and Kentucky, guys? Could be, because Tennessee is a legit threat to go into the tournament as the number one seed, a number one seed, not the, but a number one seed. And Kentucky, they actually could still get to the number one line themselves. I think they're probably more likely a two or a three. Uh, this is a fascinating matchup because you've got two teams that are pretty similar in terms of their physical structure. Tennessee's got the better offense, but not by that much. Kentucky's half-court offense has really improved dramatically since the start of the season. I think this Kentucky team is ahead of most Calipari teams at this time of year. Um and I don't put much into Kentucky's loss to LSU. They've been playing great basketball, coming out of a good win at Mississippi State over the weekend, return home to face an LSU team. And still, despite the fact they've got one of the great young minds in college basketball and Will Wade coaching the team and some real talent, LSU's still not being given a whole lot of respect. And I think that plus nine played into LSU playing really good uh, basketball on Monday night. And pulling the upset, controversial upset as well, because that last basket was clearly offensive goaltending uh, or basket interference. I'm not sure what, what, but something should have been called there. Um, didn't matter because LSU played a heck of a game. And that might actually create a little value here because I, I think you're going to get Kentucky at about two. And I think on their home court, they might just be able to sneak through and beat Tennessee. At two, I'm really going to like Kentucky. I think it's going to come a little tad higher. I think you're going to still get the mystique of Kentucky put in there. And let's be honest, and, and I know when we talked about Tennessee earlier in the year, Dave, you said, I mean, this, this team's good, but we still got that one thing. We haven't seen Barnes yeah. take a team yep. and win the big game. Now, this is a big one, and I do think Kentucky got caught looking ahead a little bit. It was a sandwich spot off of on the road to Mississippi, and as good as LSU has been playing – they're flying under the radar because it's all Tennessee and Kentucky as far as the talk goes in the SEC. And it was Auburn. Yeah. Not the last, yeah, last week and a half. Well, you know, Marco, mm-hmm. 
I am all over Kentucky. Now, mm-hmm. the reason I, I, I agree with the line at two that Dave said is you are the AP number one team and you've been there for multiple weeks. It doesn't matter if you're the best team or not. People love the AP number one. I don't think. And, can, I think if they make it three, they're going to get a liability in the game that they're not looking for. I'll to. tell you what. Tennessee may be twenty three and one. These are Tennessee's true road games. At Memphis, a team that's about eighty. At Vanderbilt, a team in the one thirties. At South Carolina, about a hundred. At Texas, at Texas A and M, about ninety. At Florida, at Missouri. Florida may be a top 40 team, and that's it. You faced one forty top team on the road. It's a team, Florida, that doesn't have any offense. This is their first road game against anybody. I like the Wildcats. I agree with you. I'm on Kentucky here. I, this is a team that I just, like I said, I think they got caught looking ahead the other night. And as you said, Dave, and I've said it uh, on videos and other shows, this Kentucky team is ahead of schedule mm-hmm. from the other teams. We always see these teams start peaking in February and rolling into March. These young teams of Calipari's, they rebuild, or I don't want to say rebuild, reload every year. This year, this team has been flying for the last month. Uh, well, that, I, and the thing is that they've mastered the half-court offense quickly. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and that makes them very dangerous come tournament time because it's usually Kentucky's offense that, the, that is the question mark. Again, you got to remember, everyone talks about Duke losing everyone. They lost four people to the NBA draft yeah. last year. Right now they're starting three freshmen, a sophomore, and the Stanford transfer at center, mm-hmm. who's a senior, but a first year on the team. I think this Kentucky team is Final Four potential. All right, moving to another uh, good one um, in the Big 12. And I'm going to start with you, Ralph, because you got some interesting quotes involving this game. you got Iowa State at Kansas State. Kansas State sitting up on top of the perch in the Big 12. It's usually a Kansas team there, but you don't usually have State behind it. Uh, can they hold on and uh, break that stranglehold that Kansas has had on the Big 12 for the last 14 seasons. Well, you're two games clear now because you're 9-2 and two and right. Texas Tech and, and Kansas are 8-4. and four. Iowa State down to 7-4 and four now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what scared me, I've been on this Kansas State team quite a bit, but what scared me going into Texas is the coach and the players in the, in the Manhattan Mercury were talking about Iowa State losing that game, and now how they are in first place in the conference. Well, that scares the hell out of me. So I le- I had to leave them off the board in that Texas oh, win. I fortunately played them. But, well, yeah, I, uh, sometimes, I, I, reading, I didn't care. sometimes reading hurts yeah, you. you know, yeah, it's, 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 they've been such a different team since Dean Wade returned. Oh, no question. Completely cha- transformed the team. And they had revenge for, what, a 20-point 20 yeah. 20 point home yeah. loss, they which scored was four, their worst. 47 yes. points, yeah. So, you know, this is a game where – I I cannot play against them. You know, Dave and I have talked numerous times how good this Iowa State team is and how finally now they are ready to gel and how they started their season suspended. Their top three players, I think, were suspended in those early tournaments. So I have um, I have Kansas State as the best team. Iowa State number two, even though Iowa State's fourth place in the division, I think they're the second best team ahead of Texas Tech in that conference. You know what's weird? Um, I think in in the Big Twelve for this season. I think we're seeing it. Kansas State is actually the best team in the Big 12 in, in, in conference. But I think the team that goes the deepest come March Madness will be Iowa State. They are going to be they're going to be really scary as they continue to improve at both ends of the court with more cohesiveness. So I think Iowa State's the team that makes the deep run, but I think right now Kansas State's the better basketball team. Two-game lead for the Wildcats. It really could be kind of a, a many. It's tough to forecast dead spots. Yeah. This could be. This might be a little bit of a shaky one. I I, I can't play the game. But you can forecast pressure and a bullseye on your back. And now a team that well, has a two game lead for again. Remember, Kansas has won this what fifty eight straight years. I think yeah. fourteen. See straight that years. to me that that's the one that the game that matters from here on in for Kansas State is the rematch of Kansas. Kansas yeah. They want to sweep Kansas so bad. Oh man! But I, I do think this game has a playoff mentality. And if you get a total anywhere, you know, I, I, I would look to play 135 or less. I would look for the under. And we very well may get that type of number to look at the under where um, I, pressure on the teams, Kansas State now having pressure, Iowa State having pressure to catch them. Uh, and, and playoff type atmosphere in this game. Yeah, you said one thirty five or less. You mean one thirty five or more and go under. Yes, thank Great. you. Great. Yeah, yep. no problem on that. Uh, I could agree with that. I love Iowa State in this one. I just think Kansas. 
give them credit. They had the win against uh, Kansas. Kansas State did. Then they avoided the flat spot after that. Uh, come back with the big game um, against, uh, I think they played Baylor. Yes, they right. played Baylor. And Baylor was a team that was playing good. They're banged but, up, but, but they were hurt. Yeah, yeah, Baylor was hurt. But Baylor's been hurt, you know, and they had, they had well, won they, four they, or they, five. Now they're really hurt because the kid from Yale, the guy I always call him, I forget his name. The kid who had to transfer Trim. from Yale because he got thrown out. Uh, um, but he's, he's, he's hurt right now, and he's, you know, he's just not close to 100%. And that guy is a monster. Mason. Mason, Mason, yeah. yeah. And then you go on the road and you have that big game. You come back from Saturday to Sunday and play the game against Texas in revenge. I just I got to throw the fat and sassy call out there. Ooh. You know this is this is Kansas State. I just can't see them, and they already beat Iowa State. It's yep. Iowa yep. State that's got the revenge here this time. I like Iowa State. All right, Marco, tell us the fat and sassy story. Uh, well, we I'll save that for when we do Michigan State. You're going to use fat and sassy again? <laughs> well, 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 you know, no, but, it, but, but it, it, it ties into Michigan State. Oh, it ties okay. into right. Michigan okay. State. We'll All say right. we'll save it there. So uh, we're kind of unanimous here. If we were taking the game, uh, we, we all seem to like Iowa State. Ralph likes the under, but Dave's going to kind of be on the sidelines with this one. But I get the sense you agree. Uh, I wouldn't be playing Kansas State in this spot. All right. Let's move to uh, the Big Ten. We've got one on Saturday. Got Maryland at Michigan. And, uh, guys, you know how we love to read quotes yeah. and read guys. Well, Beeline had some quotes uh, after the game right. against uh, the other night when they went into uh, Penn State. Penn, Penn State. State. And he got thrown out of the game, by the way. Yeah. He, uh, First time he, since the 70s. Yeah. Well, he, what's, and he actually made the comment, watching the game on TV, because he had to watch the second half in the locker room, he commented that his team was tired. And um, he said, we came off an emotional win on Saturday and actually said that it is so hard to play those Saturday games and come right back on Monday, that two-day turnaround. It, it is tough. Talk used to talk about that years and years ago. Uh, out here with the Rebels, when they'd have the, the – back in the old days – The West they, Coast teams play that, yeah. Well, back in the old days, they used to do the Saturday-Monday or maybe Saturday-Tuesday sometimes trip to Colorado State in Wyoming. And he called it the worst trip in basketball. Well, it's hard getting into Wyoming. I mean, Wyoming, it period, is, is tough. Well, but it was, you know, you're up there and you got Saturday night and then you got to stay there for the weekend and then you got to wrap up the back end. Those back ends of road trips are really tough. So it might not be the altitude thing that Tark used to talk about when war out his team, but it's still a tough spot here for Michigan. And, and they're playing a bottom feeder that's been a good bottom feeder, if you want to call them that, because Penn State's had a lot of close losses. Absolutely. And uh, they got ambushed. So I think now with the going from early in the week to Saturday, you got extra days to rest and prepare. And the fact that he got thrown out of mm-hmm. that game. Can you imagine the practices this week? I think he's going to have their attention. Uh, I don't think you'll have to give say anything to get give them their attention. They're a quality program, and uh, I don't think they were happy at all with what took place at Penn State, and that that's trouble for the next opponent. Well, well I, you know, Dave, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out Ken Palm has the you know the line at seven. You would lay seven with Michigan. I think, I think it's going to come higher than that. Okay. I made it seven and a half. Okay, I think this number will come. I think it's going to come eight and a half. Okay, uh, because. Look, the betters are going to take Michigan off a loss at home, and the betters are going to react. And have the same reaction we're, we're having here is, just, well, Beeline got thrown out of the game, and they're going to be really pissed. And Maryland isn't playing quite as, as well as they were earlier. So I think you get a higher number than the, the projection here. It, go, Marco. I'll, I'll go th- last. Yep. Throw one thing in there. Maryland's the one coming off the big win right now. They're the, yeah. the team. That, now they've had extra they, days. They, had, they haven't played as well lately, but that was a good win. That, they that was a signature win yeah. that, that they needed to get their resume, you know, improved. And they played a great game against Purdue at home uh, on uh, Monday. How do you see it, Ralph? Well, you know, Michigan was 17-0. and What did they do after their first loss against Wisconsin? They beat Minnesota 59-57. Then they go to Iowa. They lose at Iowa. They're twenty and one. They lose to Iowa. What happens the next game? They they struggle against Rutgers. They win seventy seven sixty five. So I'm not going to jump in. This is a team that never is going to force the pace. No. They're as slow as it gets. They have one of the best defenses. And yeah, I said this in videos. There are eight teams 
with offensive and def- defensive efficiencies, both in the top 22, the Zags, the four teams in the ACC, Duke, Louisville, Virginia, and North Carolina. Oh, that's right. Okay. There's Kentucky, and I'm missing one more, and there's Maryland. Now, there Maryland you, is. No, I, and, and I don't want anybody to misconstrue it. I just think the number's going to come higher because the public's going to react that way. I'm not suggesting that you bet Michigan. Yeah, I think this game, I don't think Michigan hits 70s. They're going to be in the 60s. Maryland's going to be in the high 50s or low 60s. If I'm going to get an inflated number because people jumping off that, and it's going to be, you know, I I would, my number's seven. So if it would be nine, I would be on the Maryland side. So that's where I have it. If Michigan's minus five, there's no way in the world they would be. I'd be happy backing them in that role. But in this situation with a low-scoring game, proving to me that they don't really care that the loss is there. Yes, they're angry. But, uh, you know, uh, this uh, game, I will grab the points if it's that high. Yeah, you know where I'd grab the points? is if the And I, it's, I, I sometimes look at this as an odds-makers indicator. If the Ken Palm is 7 and the game comes lower than that, it comes 6 or 6.5, that's an indicator from the odds makers. They like Maryland in the game and they're going to be looking to get money on yeah. Michigan. But that's, I agree. The public's going to think Michigan off a loss, and I think that right. the game so I, so I think that's why they'll state it higher, but we'll see. All right. I, le- I lean to Michigan, but I wouldn't lay more than 8 for me. 8's my cutoff. I, I think we're going to see Michigan's best game of the year. Moving on to an ACC action. Clemson at Louisville. Oh how how does I Louisville pick themselves yeah. up off the mat after the last two well, games? You know what? They got Chris Mack, and he's one of the great coaches in college basketball, and that's maybe how they do it because, you know, Louisville's got to find a way to put the last five minutes of that game be, behind them and concentrate on how well they played for the first 30-plus minutes in the game before – History took, literally, history mm-hmm. took place. Especially now that's back-to-back losses off that tough Florida State yeah, overtime loss. Yeah, yeah they, the led Florida, is, they led Florida State that, yeah. that whole game. Yes, and gave yeah. that, and they the, lost, and, yeah. lost and didn't cover in the overtime. I can't play him here. But I'm not going to race to the window to bet against Louisville either because I think Chris Mack is that rare type of coach that I'd rather be on in this situation than against. He's, he's one of the superstars in college basketball, and I think he's going to sell his team. And guys, it was just a regular season game. Doesn't mean shit. We're going to go out there. We're going to play our butts off. In this game, we're going to show everybody what kind of a team we are. I wouldn't bet against that. Hey, Jared, if you could just uh, – Jared's behind the counter right now sitting in for Mark for a minute. If you could just replay Dave's segment and put Rolf agrees with everything Dave just said, <laughs> that would be perfect because I'll tell you what. Clemson, to me, is a fake team. Yeah. You look at their last ten games, and I'm just going to run by them quick. Wins against Georgia Tech and nobody, Pittsburgh and nobody, Wake Forest and nobody, Georgia Tech and nobody. One good win, Virginia Tech at home. They were in a bad spot. Losses to the top teams they played, Florida State and NC State. And then they go on the road to Miami and lose last mm-hmm. night, which they, they haven't played a good game. Now, with that said, I agree. I cannot play Louisville because I have to see what happens. I agree with Dave that I love Chris Mack, and he got those kids ready at Xavier for anything, every game. They overachieved. But off those back-to-back losses, three losses in four games, I have to make sure their psyche is okay before I back them. So it's a game that I'll watch with interest, but I will not – Back might either be, team betting wise might be a good game to look at in game uh, to see how Louisville comes out. Uh, you get a sense of them in the first few minutes. But I tell you one thing: if they are up pretty good with ten minutes to go, they're going to continue. Yeah. They're going to yeah. they're going to pour it on. Yeah. Yeah. you will not but, see starters coming yeah, out yeah, oh, up fifteen yeah, in yeah. this game. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you this: but I've been a situational guy all year, and it's knock on wood and Dave we talk about it every time I come into the studio when we do the radio show situational stuff has just been falling right into place this year it has and you this I is for me does tonight <laughs> I hope so too and this is a spot where I look at Louisville I can't take them in this situation and as far as the Clemson game goes um last night Ralph this is a team that prior to that loss had covered five in a row against the spread Clemson they came off the Virginia Tech win and had Louisville on deck. That was a flat spot last night from a situational spot. Miami was the play last night. I think, depending where they bring this number, what do you guys make it? I make it Louisville 8. Uh, I didn't seven, make it. 7, seven and a half, eight. 8. Yeah, I, I have it in that range. I, I think, you know, I, I'd probably make it 9, but back it off a little bit because of the situation. Yeah, I... 
At eight, I'm going to be tempted to take uh, Clemson in this game. I can't play you got low guts, go- Marco. You got I'm more gonna- guts than I do. <laughs> I, t- I just don't know how they picked themselves up off of that loss. That was – you talk about gut-wrenching, and, you know, the only one that feels worse about that loss is Kelly in Vegas. Oh, <laughs> okay, yeah. with her three-team three, three team, uh, money you- line parlay. That's which- what, 78 to 1. Yeah, and uh, if you and guys, she's got the first. He's got the first two pieces in. Yeah, with Penn State and, and up uh, twenty and up twenty three. Penn State and uh, she had her. It was a nice dog. I, I, she she won Penn State and she won uh, West uh, against Kentucky LSU. Oh, that's oh right. yeah, LSU. Yeah. So, and, you know, they were all plus three hundred dogs. Up twenty three with uh, Louisville yeah. in a seventy eight to one ticket. And, by the way, point out that the. Just so people understand, she still had a really good night. Yeah, this was this is what a lot That's of us. Kelly though, King, Kelly Cherry picks well, dogs all the time and yeah, plays. But her, the thing her is, what potty I, three some days. Right, but I, what I wanted to mention was that it's not she just doesn't bet the parlay. Right. right. Okay, that's a sprinkle. Yeah. That's her smallest bet. Right. Was the hundred dollar bet on the three team money line parlay? It's a sprinkle ticket. parlay. Yep. And uh, you know, seventy eight to one, you got to think you win it. You got to win it. I mean. And then it doesn't. I did. It, I mean, well, uh, you know, yeah. we do videos every Wednesday. We did do a video yesterday. Kelly and I was uh, did a little funny uh, video. Uh, Doctor Marco was in bad huh. beat session therapy for uh, Kelly. Interviewed her on ESPN that. even picked it up. Uh, the local news here picked it up, and ESPN uh, picked it up as well. Oh, the tweet her, talked about it. Yeah. yeah so it's like, yeah, it, it's gotten its coverage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's move to Sunday action. Ohio State at Michigan State. And, uh, Ralph, you were talking about, you know, fat and sassy and explain it. And Dave said, no, he's saving it for the other game. When we did the radio show this week when Michigan State was heading into Wisconsin the other night, I said, Tom Izzo, we love to read the the coach's quotes. And he actually said about his team in the game before – that they went into that game, this team was fat and sassy. They got lazy, just everything was coming too easy, and they came out and they played a good game. They had 24 turnovers in that loss to Illinois, it's bad loss. For the, yeah, <laughs> it, then they come back in the next game and only had nine turnovers, and I said, you know what, he got their attention. You know, and he used my phrase in a in a interview. I, you know, I copied and pasted Wait a minute. it. Is that is that phrase trademarked? Is that you your know, phrase? You know, listen, my, Michael's having a really good week. Izzo <laughs> Izzo uses one of his yeah. terms in uh, uh, Brittany. Brit- 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 yeah, liked one of my toys. Yeah, the uh, who's that? Brittany Yurton's uh, TVG uh, announcer. Peter Yurton's daughter, yeah. who's a former jockey and outstanding trainer, <laughs> and uh, his daughter was that was the horse real- kiss one. Yes, oh, yeah, he's yeah. a really, yeah. really cute kid. Yeah. Uh, for me, you know, at my age, she's a yeah. kid. Uh, and, and, uh, well, she's, probably, she's probably, she's probably thirty. Well, yeah. you know, and, but, but, but to me, that's very young. Yeah, and, a, and, and she's a very attractive girl. And by the way, really knows her horse. Oh, absolutely. Really knows her horses. She was kissing a horse on on Twitter, and you know, if you know Marco, he's a horse owner. And if he had his wife on one side and his horse on the other, he would be. Which one would he kiss first? He would kiss them both and love them both. But which he would kiss it first? I'm not the, sure. It depends how the horse has if been the racing horse had lately. Won, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If, if the horse just got me a big purse check, sorry, honey. <laughs> the horse is getting the kiss first. I can guarantee you that. Uh, All right, back to Big Ten basketball. <laughs> Actually, just a quick story on horses. I won my biggest race ever. Uh, it was the biggest race in the in Pennsylvania for three year old uh, fillies back in 1994. It was my 10 year wedding anniversary, and it was and she paid 2780 to win that night. Nice and Happy uh, anniversary. All of my guys, you know, the cronies that I know around the track, they come up to me. Damn you! You didn't tell us. I saw you here, and I was I was dressed in a suit that night. And I never go to the track in a suit. And everybody goes, I know that your horse was going to be good. You never dress up. And I told the guys, I said, listen. I said, I was dressed up because we went to a nice restaurant before the races for our 10th wedding anniversary. And they give me, yeah, yeah, sure. You just didn't want nobody to break, bring the odds down. I was getting all this shit. And then my buddy, who is assistant track announcer at the Meadows, after they put up the results and everything and the race was over, he had them put up in the infield tote board, you know, happy 10th anniversary, you know, to oh, me. Oh, Marco's the, the charmer. Yeah so, yeah, so those guys, you know, so then all those guys go, okay, well, I guess that's why you were dressed up. 
But I still had a few bucks on it. (laughs) 27 bucks, nice job. Yeah, but uh, this one, guys, Ohio State at Michigan State. This is a question of which Michigan State shows up. The Michigan State that we've seen all year or the one that had that three-game losing streak. Well, all right, here's the answer. If they they show up on defense, they'll win by whatever they want. And if they don't, then Ohio State might get some good looks and uh, and hang around. Uh, Ohio State still playing Illinois. Uh, this evening, so we don't it's know. It's a the big deal. Those game. two extra days rest. Well, well it is. Wisconsin, yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 But you know, it, but Ohio State's offense is it's atrocious. They have no creativity on the offensive end at all. They're, it's a bad offense. Uh, and if Michigan State comes to play defensively, I don't know that Ohio State's going to be able to put up more than like fifty-five on them. And I think Michigan State can get to the seventies. So. No. Jared, could you rewind the tape and put that Ralph thinks everything Dave just said he agrees with? I'll tell you what. Ohio State might might be three straight wins, maybe four wins after Illinois, mm. and has won four or five going pre-Illinois. The teams they beat, Nebraska, Rutgers, Penn State, Indiana, the bottom four teams in the conference, those teams are 13 and, and 39 games. in Big Ten games. And they haven't covered them. They're 1-8 no, at they home. They barely beat Penn yeah. State. And that was with a 21-1 to one run in the first half. And they were actually lucky to win the game. Michigan State, 9-3 and three ATS as a home favorite. Michigan State off that Wisconsin win. Plenty of time to adjust from Tuesday to Sunday. Michigan State, any worries on deck? No. Rutgers at home. No issues here. Michigan State in a landslide. Well, and one other thing is that Michigan State did enough damage with those three losses to drop down a line or two. And as far as the selection committee is concerned, I don't think he wants to lose any more games for a while because they, they want to be a high seed. Um, I agree with the Michigan State side, but I'm going to go a different way. I'm going under in this game. And if Tom Izzo got the attention of his team with those comments and what we saw, you're going to see it, Dave, as you said, on the defensive end of the floor. This is the third-ranked defense in the country, allowing opposing teams just 37.3 shooting. These two played already, and it was a higher-scoring game for these two. They totaled 163 points in that first meeting. Based on that, I think we're going to get a favorable number with the total. I'm here. I'm saying if I get 144 or higher in this game, I'm going under. That's where I'm at. I lean to Michigan State, but if I get something at 144 or higher, that'll be the bigger play for I'm me. Putting it, I'm putting it 138 and a half. Where are you there? Passing? 138. I would. I got to be one forty. I got to okay. be one. I got to be at one forty. So one forty. You might start looking at it. One forty four for sure. Yeah. Okay. So, but it was one guess is But it was higher than one forty in the first. Yeah, meeting. but we've seen Michigan State play now. Play their defense midseason after that Wisconsin game, and Ohio State has slowed the tempo quite a bit as much. So, so I think there will be one of the bigger adjustments you see in a rematch, especially only a rematch, you know, eight or ten games apart. All right, good stuff, guys. We're going to step out for a quick break. It's our final break of the night. When we return, you know what it is. It is best bet time. That's up next here on the Wager Talk Podcast. Welcome back to the Wager Talk Podcast. Before we jump into this week's best bets, I'm going to give you guys a special offer. Hey, we ran a deal at Wager Talk today. It was our Valentine's Day special. I'm going to extend that offer for another day. We're going to have it go through Friday. You can pick up a seven-day package. Just use coupon code SWEETHEART. That's right. Buy your sweetheart, and I mean yourself, what you really want, and that is seven-day all-access package from your favorite capper. That's good for anybody at Wager Talk. You can check it out. Uh, that'll be good through midnight on Friday. Get a seven-day package, normally $119 for just $79. All right, guys, let's head. And that's only $10 more than a three-day package, so outstanding nice. offer. Dave? We're going to head to you, and you're going to go back to the SEC for your best bet. Well, Who do you yeah, got? Look, it's a game I want to watch. I don't know if it'll make my card or not, but I do like this site to some extent, and it just depends on where the number comes and whether I feel it's justified in putting a percentage play uh, next to it. But I think Kentucky will find a way to get past Tennessee. Rick Barnes is going to have to prove to me he can win a game that matters on the road against a top-notch opponent. I think we're going to catch, not saying great value, but we won't get beat up on the line because Kentucky lost the game to LSU and Tennessee's coming in with the number one ranking. So 
You can get Kentucky minus two about uh, roughly the, uh, two here. Even three, I think I'd lean Wildcats in this game. We'll go Kentucky best bet. Ralph, let's head to you. You're going to Friday night, my man. What are you looking at? You know, I am going to play Davidson against St. Joe's. That early number is 11. Uh, you know, St. Joe's is a team that I had really high this year, and I was happy to play on them. But they have just become devastated with injuries with uh, – Lamar Kimball going out and Olivia, and you look at them on the road, they have yet to win a road game. Uh, you don't you don't get to February very often for a team like St. Joe's that is 11 and 14 and is yet to win a road game. So uh, it's a situation where Davidson has the better offense, a better defense. Uh, it's a situation that Davidson lost at St. Joe's. I'm back back in uh, the middle of January, 61-60. St. Joe's had many more players at that time. They get revenge. It's a very favorable number at 11 or even the 11 and a half. I am on uh, Davidson this week. All right. For my best bet, I'm going back to the Big 12. We talked about that Iowa State-Kansas State game. And I got to tell you, this is just a horrible spot for Kansas State. I know they're the first place team in the conference. I know they're at home. But you're going to look and see a small number uh, on this one. And this is one of those ones, Ralph, where we talk about uh, situational plays, fat and sassy. But also, I like to talk about trap games. And this is going to come out as a very short number. And Kansas State's going to be the top team in the conference. And people are going to look at this one and say, Basically, just got to win the game. And they already beat Iowa State at Iowa State. So that's going to make it look even easier for them to get it done at home, and especially the way they're playing right now. Uh, And then the comments that you talked about that Kansas State made um, after Iowa State dropped a game, I just think that uh, Iowa State's going to have read those comments too. And this is a team that is going to be primed and ready to go into Kansas State and I think pull out a win. And uh, this is my best bet for the podcast. And, Ralph, there is a very strong possibility this game makes my Saturday card. Um, I like this game that much. Um, Iowa State. And you know we've been running very good on uh, the college basketball. It gives me something to root for. Uh Uh-oh. Marco against Kelly. Uh Uh Uh-oh. No, no. Kelly did say for... On, on videos yes. that she may actually be on the Iowa State side as well she because said it of is the situation. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, uh, although Kelly is Ms. Kent State, Kansas State, yeah. uh, she knows you know you, you bet with your head and not your heart, and she's not she's not afraid to play on a game that has value when it's not there. Absolutely. All right, guys, I uh, that's going to wrap things up for this week. I want to thank our guest tonight, William Bernacki from CG Analytics. Big thanks to my guys here in studio, Ralph Michaels and Dave Koken, uh, Mark Seidel uh, for making sure we sound good. Big shout out to Johnny Detroit. No, no shout out to Johnny Detroit this week. Screw Johnny. He's on a cruise. Uh, A shout out to Missy and Reno back in the offices in Detroit taking care and making sure that the podcast is out everywhere. You can uh, download us, subscribe to us on iTunes, listen on Spotify, Google Play, and iHeartRadio. And last but not least, thanks to you guys, our loyal listeners. We wouldn't be doing this show without you. We appreciate you tuning in each and every week. I'm Marco D'Angelo. Until next week, let's cash some tickets. Thanks for listening.